This is my third video lesson for Unit 10. In this lesson, we'll be calculating the total enthalpy in a series of chemical reactions. Go to page 14 in the class packet. Motivation. What are the similarities and differences between the two paths? Take a moment to look at this picture. The similarity between the two paths is that they go from the base to the summit of the mountain. The difference is that one of the paths takes longer than the other one because it has a greater distance. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to use Hess law to calculate the overall enthalpy of a series of chemical reactions. Homework B number three, which will be a junipod based off this lesson, there will be a quiz junipod on PowerPoint one, two, and three. We are first going to analyze the four and reverse reaction for chemical equations. Here we're given three chemical equations and the delta H, which is the enthalpy. To write the reverse reaction, we have to flip the fourth reaction. For example, in question one, the products of the fourth reaction becomes the reactant of the reverse reaction. The reactant of the fourth reaction becomes the products of the reverse reaction. The delta H of the reverse reaction is the negative delta H of the fourth reaction. So the delta H of this equation will be positive 890.4. Now try to write the reverse equation for number two and three and the delta H's. Pause the video and resume as completed. Here are the answers. Check up on this thing number one. What happens to the equation and delta H when you write a reverse reaction? In a reverse reaction, the products of the four becomes the reactant of the reverse. The reactants of the four becomes the products of the reverse. The delta H or enthalpy of the reverse reaction is the negative delta H or enthalpy of the four reaction. Now we're going to discuss two types of function, state and path function. A state function is a value that does not depend on the path taken. The path function does depend on the path taken. For example, from the motivation, both paths accomplish the same result, but the paths have different distances. Therefore, distance is a path function. In this example, we have two paths. Either you take the elevator to go from the bottom floor to the top floor, or in the other path, you can push the car up three floors to the top floor. Both paths accomplish the same result, which is moving your car from the bottom floor to the top floor. However, they require different amount of work. Therefore, work will be considered a path function. Let's look at an example of a state function. Let's say you're heating an object from the initial temperature to the final temperature with just one heating versus heating the same object from the initial temperature with three rounds of heating to the final temperature. Notice that both paths have the same initial temperature and they both go to the same final temperature. However, the paths were different. This one had one heating, this one had three heatings. The different paths and the different number of heatings did not affect the value of delta T, which is the same in both cases. Therefore, temperature is considered a state function. Here are other examples of state functions, enthalpy, pressure, and volume. For the rest of the lesson, we are going to focus on enthalpy as a state function using Hess law. Hess law states if two or more chemical equations can be added together to produce an overall equation, the sum of the enthalpy equals the enthalpy change of the overall equation. This is called heat of reaction or delta H. In this diagram, we have two reactions with the same reactants and same products, but two different pathways for the reactants to become products. One of the reactions has one step, the other reactions have three steps. Since delta H or enthalpy is a state function, the delta H of reaction is the same for both reactions. And according to Hess law, the sum of the individual delta H's is equal to the delta H of reaction, as shown here. Here's a procedure on how to calculate the heat of reaction using Hess law. Here's the equation for delta H of reaction, which is the sum of the delta H of each step. The first step in the procedure is to write the overall equation for the reaction if it's not given. Step two, manipulate the given equation for the steps of the reaction so they add up to the overall equation. You can manipulate by reversing the reaction or multiplying or dividing the reaction by a whole number. 
Then you can add up the equations by canceling common substances in the reactant and product. And the last step is to add up the delta H of each of the steps to equal the heat of the overall reaction. Let's look at a generic example. Let's say there's two steps in this reaction. The goal is to calculate the delta H of reaction. The first step is to write the overall equation. We are going to combine equation 1 and equation 2 to get the overall equation. Notice there's some common substances on the reactant and product side. B2 is on the reactant and product side. AB2 is on the reactant and product side. Therefore, we can cancel them out. So 2AB2 is canceled out, and 1 of the B2 is canceled out. Now we can combine equation 1 and equation 2. So we get 2A plus B2 to give us 2AB. So the heat of reaction is minus 100 plus 50 kilojoules, which is negative 50 kilojoules. Let's look at another example. Here we're given two steps and their delta H. To get the heat of reaction, we have to combine these two steps to get the overall equation. To combine both equations, we must cancel out the common substances on both sides. Notice that CO gas is on the reactant and product side. We can cancel it out. Now we can combine equation 1 and 2. Notice that both equations have 1 half O2 on the reactant side. So when you combine them, that becomes 1 O2. So the overall equation is C plus O2 to give us CO2. The heat of reaction is the sum of the delta H of each step, which is negative 394 kilojoules. Here's a diagram to illustrate our calculations. Let's look at example 1 in the class packet. Determine the heat of reaction for this equation using the following sets of reactions. To get the delta H of reaction, we have to combine these two reactions to get the overall equation. Notice that we cannot just combine them because some of the substances are in the wrong places. Notice in the overall equation, water is on the reactant side, but in this equation, water is on the product side. Therefore, we have to reverse this reaction by flipping it so that water is on the reactant side. Since we reverse this reaction, we have to change delta H by multiplying it by negative 1. So the delta H of this reaction is positive 241.8 kilojoules. Now we can combine both equations. Notice that 1 half O2 is on the reactant and product side. We can cancel it out. Now we can combine equation 1 and 2. We got the overall equation that matches the one that we're given. We can combine the delta H now to get the delta H of reaction. It is positive 131.3 kilojoules. Now let's look at example 2 in the class packet. Use these equations to calculate the molar enthalpy change, the heat of reaction, which produces butane gas. So butane is C4H10, and this is the overall equation. There are three sets of equations that we must combine to get this equation. Let's look at the first equation. Notice that butane, C4H10, is on the wrong side. In the first equation, it's on the reactant side, but on the overall equation, it's on the product side. Therefore, we must reverse this equation by flipping it. By reversing the reaction, we have to multiply the delta H by negative 1. So the delta H of this reaction is positive 2,657.4 kilojoules per mole. Now let's look at the second equation. Notice in the overall equation, we have four carbons, but the second equation only has one. Therefore, we have to multiply the whole equation by four. Since we multiplied the whole equation by four, we have to multiply delta H by four as well. Now let's look at the third equation. Notice in the overall equation, there's five H2, but this equation only has 1 H2. So we have to multiply the whole equation by 5. And we also have to multiply the delta H by 5 as well. Now we can combine all three equations to get the overall equation and solve for delta H of reaction. To combine these three equations, we must cancel out the same substances on both sides of the equations. 5 H2O was canceled out. 
four CO2 is canceled out and six and a half O2 is canceled out. Notice our combined equation is the same as the overall equation. We can now combine the delta H to get the delta H of reaction. So the delta H of reaction is negative 125.6 kilojoules per mole. Now I want you to watch another video about Hess law. The link to the video will be in the descriptions of this video. Once you watch it, resume this video. Now try to do the rest of the problems on your own. Pause the video and resume once you complete it. Here are the answers. So this reaction is exothermic because delta H of reaction is negative. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Junipot homework and quiz.